So Digby, as we were uh, uh, talking in the last segment, we were we were we were doing the thirty thousand foot view of a a week that has been super crazy. Following a week that was also super crazy, uh, I'm sure if I went back far enough, we would find a week that was only moderately crazy. <laughs> um, you know that uh, undoubtedly followed and preceded a week that was super crazy. But uh, this week was particularly. Uh, not so, and because it it did really present a, um, a real multitude of things. We had, uh, uh, in terms of the Trump administration, we went from the mooch to uh, really the white nationalists, at least in the uh, at least in the news. We also saw the uh, the Republican Party leadership in the Senate, anyways, uh, pivot from trying to uh, destroy our health care system to uh, just the good old let's just cut taxes and not pretend it's anything else uh, modus of, uh, of operandi. And we will get to that a little bit later. But let's talk about John Kelly, who came in, I guess, uh, was it last weekend or somewhere around there? Uh, the first thing he did was to, to uh, get rid of the mooch. Then also during the week he said to Jeff Sessions, I got your back. And when I, my, my attitude about stuff like that is if I hear about what is supposedly, you would imagine, an internal conversation, that means there was a reason why I heard it. And it was that Kelly wants to make it clear he's keeping sessions. And so that if the president does fire sessions, He's also, the president's also aware that he's going against what Kelly wants. I mean, that's the way I read that. What's your take on that? I think that's true. I mean, I think, I think that's true. I mean, I think that, that there's, a, there's a reason why that uh, got out. And let me just point out something else. I mean, Kelly also was revealed dirt last week to have called James Comey on the day he was fired and offered to resign in solidarity. Now, that story got buried because it was the day that Scaramucci was fired. But I'm sure that Donald Trump has heard about it. Mm -hmm. So there is some, you know, th this undercurrent here of, you know, Kelly, I don't know who leaked that story or where it came out. And one assumes that it came from the Comey camp. But, you know, maybe it came from Kelly. I mean, we don't know, right? I mean, there's all kinds of leaking going on. Um, but whatever, the, these kinds of stories coming out uh, about Kelly telling Sessions that he had his back, telling Comey that he offered to resign, and Comey said, no, you don't. Well, all of this, and you know, for all we know, this is Steve Bannon or, or Ivanka or somebody else. That's the way this, this White House operates, undermining Kelly as well. Yep. So, you know, I guess the, the bottom line for me is, is that the idea that somehow or another this general was going to come in and end all this palace intrigue is wildly overblown. He's part of the palace intrigue. He is, you know, intrinsic to the sort of gamesmanship that's going on within the White House, different than Reince Priebus or Sean Spicer or Scaramucci. He's got his own little, little uh, cadre of supporters and opponents. But nonetheless, uh, this is going to continue. It's going to go on. There's, you know, I, Kelly can't stop it because this is, as Scaramucci so colorfully said it, you know, the fish rots from the head, and that would be Donald Trump. Yeah, I mean, I I tend to think that we might, it, things might calm down in the palace intrigue in the uh, near term. I mean, uh, this week we also saw McMaster, another general, um, uh, chair of the National Security Council, take out a couple of, Flynn people uh, uh, remaining on the uh, and also people who were were providing Nunes with information. So yes. there's a sense and, you know, it's it's very difficult to parse this stuff. Um, but, you know, and Kelly, as the head of the DHS, we also found out this week was telling people during the Muslim ban, was telling uh, DHS employees, don't deal with Congress, don't answer lawyers' questions, yep. don't answer... I mean, so there's a lot of different car cross currents where the sort of the nationalism bucks up against um, the investigations of Donald Trump. And we got stuff to talk about that, um, uh, you know, in, in the next hour. But when he says, I, Sessions, I got your back, 
Theoretically, that makes firing sessions uh, harder, and that makes getting rid of Mueller harder. Getting rid of those people on the National Security Council also, it seems to me, is a way of letting the investigation continue, I believe. Um, and uh, the the other sort of you know the other so so the dynamic is such that I think you know he is a member of the palace intrigue. It's just that his faction may be dominant for a while now. I would imagine that part about Donald Trump stewing on the idea that this guy spoke to Comey may take a while to percolate, and we <laughs> may be a couple of weeks away before the next uh, sort of implosion. But. There's a lot to be scared about, I think, with um, all the generals involved here. There was another piece of reporting this week that Kelly and Mattis had made an agreement with each other to never both be out of the country at the same time, uh, which was a really stunning thing to find out, that you that these two generals don't either trust to be out of the country at the same time with, with Donald Trump. It's a little bit nerve-wracking. Right, look, we've got so much more to talk about, but we got to take a break here. Uh, uh, Heather, you'll join me in the next hour, if you would, and we're going to take a Absolutely. quick break. I'm Sam Cedar. This is Ring of Fire Radio.